Hello everyone, well it's about time I got on and reviewed MX-16. It's been out a little while now and uh, I don't know why I've not really got around to looking at it, but this has been one of my most requested distros to review. So it's described as a midweight distro and it's based on Debian Jesse, so it's a couple of years old now and it uses the XFCE desktop. They have added a few custom tools to make the distro a little bit easier to use because Debian is a little bit more harder to use than, say, Ubuntu. Upon first glance here, you can see the styling is a bit more unique. Uh, no other distro looks exactly like this. I suppose Unity is half on the direction to look in this way, but you have the launcher at the bottom of the screen here in MX16. This is the whisker menu that is very nice and responsive. Now, I do quite like the XFCE desktop, and I said it was one of the best Linux desktops you can get at the moment. While I do like KDE, it is a bit heavy on development and a little bit buggy sometimes. But so far MX16 has done exactly what I wanted it to do. It has not caused any issues, been very stable. Just showing the arrow snap like effect in action there. And yes, you can do quadrants as well. You can see when you've got the application open, the iconified view of it appears at the top of the panel there. That is nice and responsive there, and yeah, I can right click and close them. And we've got the time, date and calendar at the top of the screen. At the bottom of the panel we have the update manager, clipboard, keyboard settings, as volume control and eject for any removable USB devices. Let's have a look at this welcome screen. So we have a user manual. This is the PDF version, but there is an online version as well. I've had a look for it. They have done a very thorough job, really, in describing all the various aspects that you may need. So let's just give it a quick example, really. So describing there about the whisker menu. Let's have a scroll down, just see what we land on. Ah, how to install the wireless network adapters. Basic wireless steps. Reasonably thorough. A wiki page. MS slash anti X technical documentation wiki. Yeah. Useful tools. Oh, I was going to come on to this a bit later actually. Um, now let's go back to the welcome screen. Don't know why it closed the welcome screen though. So, default look. Oh, this was useful. So, you can display the panel horizontally or vertically. So being able to move the panel horizontally and vertically, that's got as many features in as Unity has. And, <laughs> and we can choose between light and dark themes. That's a useful feature. So we also have links to the forums, videos. These are videos that have been created by Run With the Dolphin. I've not actually looked at any of his videos, though. So this package installer picks up a few common applications that you might like to have. Now it does have Firefox on here, and that is slightly greyed out. Perhaps a little hard to sort of tell there, considering that looks like a tick box, and you might think, why doesn't it just have a tick? So that's useful for getting started. That is a bit of a basic styling, we're just relying on text and pop-up boxes. It gets the job done though, so can't really complain too much. Let's take a look at this MX Tools. So what can we do here? Snapshot of backup, live USB maker. Flash Manager. This was uh, installing Flash Player, wasn't it? Yes. No, no, I don't want Flash Player at all. Cancel. Ah, so useful part here. Installing the graphics drivers. AMD FGLRX. So yeah, that dates back a while because we don't have the Vulkan drivers here in Debian. Or at least Debian Jesse doesn't have the Vulkan drivers. That means you could have some issues if you've got newer hardware. The codex installer I used, that was what, rather useful. Gets the job done nice and easy. So things like that are a bit difficult to do in the stock version of Debian. Let's take a look how we're doing under system resources. So the task manager. 8% of 4 gig of RAM. That's not particularly high, is it? Let's get an actual figure from the terminal. A nice theme for the terminal, very colourful. 300 meg of RAM used with 800 meg in cache overall. That's pretty low. Considering we've been using the system and opened up a few things. In terms of themes that have been provided on the system, there are actually quite a few pre-installed. 
yes, quite a long list to choose from here. And the defaults looked very reminiscent of GNOME. So I have to say, when I first booted up the system, I thought, is this the GNOME desktop? And then I just prodded further, and it's now it's quite obvious when you right click and go to the applications, that's the XFC behavior right there. It looks like the font we have by default is the Droid Sans. Yeah, looks pretty good. So what else is of interest on this system? Well, looking at the applications we have installed, it's a little bit bulkier than most distros would have. There's quite a few items there under accessories. Under games, we've got a few basic games installed. Graphics, GIMP image editor, ah, Mirage image viewer, one of my favorites. Although I must admit, I quite like Gwenview now. Under internet, as I've mentioned, we have Firefox for the default browser. We also have Thunderbird Email, Multimedia, Clementine, one of my favourite music players, and VLC. A couple of extras here as well, SMTube and GMPT. Office, so we have the full suite of LibreOffice. Settings, yeah, it's quite a bit under here. And System, and quite a few things there. So why is MX16 so good? I don't know. Because it works, does its job, keeps quiet, has a basic look that perhaps has gone unappreciated these days. Yeah, those could all be valid reasons. I think perhaps you've got a limiting factor here of it not being able to work on absolutely brand new hardware. But I think if, say, your hardware is more than one year old, then don't see a reason why it won't really work. So that was a look at MX16. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.